and welcome to X-Ray Review. In this video, we're going to go through the radiographic appearance of avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis are generic terms referring to the ischemic or vascular death of bone from a wide variety of causes that can affect most bones in the body. As the vascular supply to the bone is damaged, the bone cells die, altering the appearance of the bone. So let's first take a look at the normal shape of the femoral head. It should be spherical and round in shape. The blood supply to the femoral head comes from the medial and lateral circumflex branches of the profunda femoris, which is a branch of the femoral artery. The medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries anastomatize to form a ring around the neck of the femur, from which many small arteries branch off to supply the femoral head and the artery of the ligamentum teres is an additional supply of blood. An ischemic injury to the blood supply to the femoral head will cause avascular necrosis. And in the femoral head, this is so common, most likely due to the combination of potentially vulnerable blood supply and high stress when standing. As the osseous cells die, there's flattening and deformity of the femoral head, subchondral sclerosis and cyst formation, cortical collapse, possible osseous fragmentation, alteration in the trabecular markings, and even subchondral fracture. And this can all lead to severe clinical symptoms, uh, as well as advanced degenerative arthrosis and ultimately joint replacement. There are numerous etiologies for AVN of the femoral head not to be limited to trauma, chronic corticosteroid therapy, systemic lupus erythematosus, alcoholism, drug smoking, diabetes, pregnancy, sickle cell anemia, pancreatitis, idiopathic, amyloid, and Gaucher's disease. When it does treatment in a traumatic fashion, it's usually going to be unilateral versus many of these other causes uh, which are non-traumatic, which usually present in a bilateral presentation. When it comes to imaging of avascular necrosis, MRI is the gold standard when it comes to diagnosis and staging. CT is much more sensitive than X-ray, uh, specifically for identifying subchondral fractures. X-rays do have their purposes and uses, um, especially for looking at the general appearance of the femoral head, the position and percentage of the femoral head that's involved, any coexisting osteoarthritis or joint effusion. Uh, if there's an unstable osteochondral fragment that should be visible, and then also subtle subchondral fractures can be seen on x-ray. Radiographic findings of AVN of the femoral head are going to include flattening or deformity of the femoral head, subchondral sclerosis, subchondral cyst formation, the location that's usually involved with the anterior superior aspect of the femoral head, usually the 10 to 2 o'clock position on uh, cortical collapse, fragmentation, there will be trabecular alteration uh, and even medial um, periosteal bone formation and that can occur on the medial aspect of the femoral neck. And then also something called a crescent sign which is a subchondral fracture of the femoral head. The treatment and prognosis of AVN, uh, really the goal is, of treatment is going to be to reduce the stress and load and then to promote revascularization um, of that bone. So conservative treatments can consist of anti-inflammatory drugs, analgesics, and then reducing that weight bearing. Surgery will, can be the core decompression where there is actually uh, drilling into the femoral head and you can actually see residual screw tracks here from a previous core decompression. And then ultimately joint replacement or a total hip arthroplasty. There are numerous different eponyms for avascular necrosis, in particular osseous locations. Avascular necrosis can affect almost any bone in the body. The ones we're going to look at here are the femoral head. In an adult, that can be referred to as Chandler's disease. And in a child, it can be referred to as leg calf Perth's disease, which is an idiopathic avascular necrosis of the femoral head in kids. And let's take one more look at a normal hip and femoral head in comparison 
to one with avascular necrosis. And now let's look at some examples of AVN of the femoral head. This patient presented with severe right hip pain and low back pain. And you should notice a considerable asymmetry in between the two visualized femoral heads. If you look closely, you'll see a small subchondral fracture at the superior aspect of the femoral head. The femoral head is flattened and slightly deformed. The area of increased density at the articular surface of the femoral head represents subchondral sclerosis. And then you should also notice advanced degenerative changes in comparison to the contralateral side, which include moderate to severe loss of the superior lateral femoral acetabular joint space and mild osteophytic ridging of the acetabulum and femoral head. This patient presented with bilateral hip pain, and you'll notice bilateral avascular necrosis with visible subchondral fractures and deformity. This patient has a known history of chronic corticosteroid usage, and you'll notice bilateral uh, flattening and deformity of both femoral heads with prominent subchondral cyst formation uh, seen with avascular necrosis. If you look closely at the subarticular surface of the femoral head, you'll notice a thin curvy linear radiolucency, and that represents the subchondral fracture and can be referred to as a crescent sign. And when seen, that's highly indicative of avascular necrosis. Here's a good example of a traumatic etiology causing avascular necrosis and there is severe degenerative changes as well and this patient's going to need an orthosurgical consultation for evaluation and management. This middle-aged male had a significant trauma one month previous to these images being taken and you'll notice a subchondral fracture with large avascular necrosis of the femoral head. This patient has bilateral avascular necrosis of both femoral heads, but it's much more visible on the viewing left. Anytime you have a question of avascular necrosis, MRI is the gold standard. And uh, after an MRI, both femoral heads were easily seen to have avascular necrosis. Sometimes the degenerative changes are so severe that it's difficult to appropriately visualize the femoral head in order to assess it for AVN. And in those situations, remember MRI is the gold standard and um, AVN won't be able to hide on an MRI of the pelvis. Here is a classic presentation of avascular necrosis where you can see what looks like almost a chunk or a bite taken out of the superior aspect of the femoral head. And this is very characteristic of AVN. This is a younger individual with a history of trauma and you'll notice significant degenerative changes as well as flattening, deformity, subchondral cyst formation, and likely an underlying subchondral fracture of that femoral head. And here's one last example of bilateral AVN with very large subchondral cyst formation and severe arthrosis of the femoral acetabular joints. So let's go through a couple of questions here. Which of the following is an eponym for avascular necrosis in a skeletally immature femoral head? Chandler's disease, leg calf purse disease, Kindbox disease, Panner's disease, or Seaver's disease. And leg calf purse disease is the correct answer. Chandler's is in an adult. The most common skeletal location for avascular or ischemic necrosis is the, is the lateral femoral condyle, proximal ulna, distal radius, 
humeral head or femoral head? And of course the correct answer is femoral head. The gold standard for imaging of known avascular necrosis of the femoral head is, is it plain film radiography, digital radiography, MRI, bone scintigraphy, or a scanogram? And the correct answer is MRI. The most common cause for AVN of the femoral head is trauma, gout, Galchet's disease, ankylosing spondylitis, or pregnancy? And trauma is the correct answer. True or false? The medial and lateral circumflex arteries are the most likely involved vascular structures regarding AVN of the femoral head. And this statement is true. All right, well, thank you for listening. And don't forget to please like and subscribe. Also, check out some of the other videos that I have previously done. And if there is any particular topics that you would like covered, please put them in the comments below. Thanks again.